the real GOAT. I know I've been throwing the word GOAT around a lot, but Pharrell is number one. Everyone's got to pay homage to Pharrell when it comes to this jewelry game. You got the multicolored Gucci links with the famous nerd piece, probably the most iconic piece of all time. It just went into auction right now. I actually believe Drake bought the piece. Yo, yo, what's up, GQ? I'm Moses the Jeweler. I'm a jeweler in New York City who's been doing this for the past decade. And today we're gonna be looking at chains and pendants worn by the biggest rappers in the game today. What we got here is uh, Drake wearing uh, one of the craziest pieces I've ever seen. We'll probably be in a museum one day. This piece was uh, called, I believe, uh, Previous Engagements. It was done by Alex Moss. I think it took around like 14 months to make this. So right here we got 42 different diamonds. Every single one is supposed to represent each one of Drake's lovers in this lifetime. Of course, being the certified lover boy that he is. It's supposed to be an engagement ring every single stone. That add up to a total of 351 carats. If you do the math on that, that's an average of 8 carat to 9 carat per stone. To even own one of those in a lifetime is shocking. And Drake has 42 on his neck over here. You have emerald cuts in there, you have asher cuts, you have pear shapes, you have rounds. Literally every single uh, special cut, which is... Over 10 million, easily. Van Cleef and Arpel. This is actually one of the biggest uh, trends that's going on right now in the last year. I actually wear a couple myself, as you can see. Very classic piece. He's wearing the one with the white mother of pearl in the 18 karat white gold. This is something that's just, uh, if you know, you know type of piece. You know, he said, All right, I'm gonna wear this with my iced out sky dweller. I believe that's a factory sky dweller on his wrist. It's over a million dollar piece over there also. Mother of Pearl is a natural stone from the ocean, of course. In order to create this, you actually have to cut the stone in the motif shape and then set it inside. Actually not supposed to wear it in water or anything because it could uh, get dehydrated. That at Van Cleef would probably be around like uh, 18,000 retail. I'm assuming ASAP Rocky is a big uh, art collector. And he said, you know, I have a couple of these uh, special bear bricks in my home. I actually want to bring one to life and put it on my neck. So whichever jewelry he had to make that, again, takes a crazy amount of skill because as you can see, all the pieces are done separate so they're able to move. This is a fully functional jewelry piece. You need to have a very skilled jeweler who also understands mechanics. Of course, every single piece has to be done separate and you need to make sure that everything is able to move correctly without the piece breaking on you. Again, it's very different when you're handling gold and diamonds as opposed to just a regular base metal because gold is a lot softer. So when you're dealing with gold, you want to make sure that this can handle the wear and tear as opposed to a regular base metal. The OG Koofy Jesus over there. Shout out Biggie Smalls, who popularized it. <laughs> OG Jesus piece, man. This is a piece that was uh, huge from the 90s. And uh, now we're seeing uh, rappers like ASAP Rocky bringing him back, you know? Trends always come back. Whatever was hot in the 90s, you had the big baggy clothes, then it went to the tight, and now we're back in baggy, just like we're seeing right now with the Koofy Jesus. This is a direct inspiration from Pharrell's chain. But Tyler said, let's go a little different. I want to have that, uh, that gumball machine feel on my neck. And uh, when it comes to a piece like this, it takes a lot more work because uh, when it comes to those balls, those balls are iced out 360. So with the diamonds over here, of course you have the uh, natural white diamonds. And I would assume he used natural yellow diamonds because they don't get so crazy expensive when it comes to the natural yellow. But with the blues and pinks, I would have to assume that they went through an irradiation, which means that you uh, color intensify the stone. So they are natural diamonds, but they do go through a certain process to bring out a different type of color in the stone. Because if those were natural pinks and blues, we'd be hearing it on the news, this piece could have been worth $10 million. Crazy 3D, 3D work on the big uh, money man holding the briefcases over there. It's crazy work on that, just to make all that stuff done. Again, the briefcases have to have been uh, done separate and uh, to continue to hold all that detail while still drilling into the piece and setting the stones. I believe this is Alex Moss who made this piece. Great job. Another wick over here, probably woke up that morning and said, all right, I'm throwing on everything I got because uh, I really want to show what I, uh, what I put my money into. So as you can see, we have three different huge custom pieces on his neck, accommodated by three different Cubans, all different lengths to hold the pieces in different areas of his neck. The top Cuban, the shortest one, actually got bigger pointers in there. It was like three to four pointers on his neck, and that gives you a different effect as opposed to like, the tighter, smaller, one-pointer type Cuban. So he said, I wanna have that contrast between all these different Cubans, superstar stuff. 100 points will equal one carat. So when people say, oh, I got a 10-pointer chain on, that means I have one-tenth of a carat per stone on my neck. A chain like this is 60 pointers each. This will run you around uh, $100,000 for a chain like this. So every single stone here is 
60th out of 100. So it would be a little bit bigger of half a carat. So it's 60% of a full carat. So Nardawick, on the smaller Cubans, those are around one pointers each. And then on the top Cuban that he's wearing, holding his wick piece, those look to me like three to four pointers. Of course, the bigger a diamond becomes, the more value it is. So everyone says, oh, if I bring you 100 stones that are one pointers each, can you make me one single stone a carat out of it? And unfortunately, no. <laughs> because a one carat stone will cost you around $6,000, and one carat in small stones will run you around like $500. Ice Spice, baby. The queen of New York now, she uh, really made a name for herself. I'm feeling spicy when I, when I, uh, when I see a piece like that on her neck. Extremely three-dimensional. That piece is probably holding, I'd say, 6,000 stones in there. I believe uh, Benny the Jeweler made this one. So a piece like this, first of all, to even set those diamonds in the hair, as you can see, all those different nooks and crannies over there, very hard to set, but they obviously got it done for her. And then after they put that hot pink, lipstick on the lips, which was done after the diamond setting, of course, because if you're gonna put enamel on a piece before diamond setting, then the diamond setter could mess up the enamel by uh, touching it with his tools. So of course, to give the contrast to the piece also, after the diamond setting, they did a nice little outline of black enamel out the eyes to really give it its uh, definition and uh, three-dimensional look. One of the jewelry goats over here, Meek Mill, man. Since that role he first touched his wrist, he really went crazy. He said, uh, I'm gonna go down as one of the biggest uh, jewelry collectors of all time in the hip hop game. And as we can see over here, he just threw on a whole bunch of different pieces on his neck. He's got the DC and Emerald cuts. I can't even imagine how many times he made this DC piece also. He did it with uh, one characters with Shine Jewelers. He did so many different micro pave ones that he gifted to his team. And over here he got uh, done by my brother, uh, Pristine over there. He got the custom uh, DC done in emerald cuts, and then he has the DC Dreamcatcher piece right next to it, which also amazing piece, a lot of details, a lot of definition, all those balls separately done, attached, assembled together. A piece like that does take a lot of effort, a lot of time. Very colorful, very fun, outlandish, and uh, stands out almost anywhere. He's hiding in between all those chains. As you can see, he's got those yellow diamonds, which look to me around like a 80 pointers to a carat each, and a chain like that, every single stone could run you around six, seven thousand dollars. So you do the math. He's got a uh, hundred stones in there. That's uh, seven hundred thousand dollars drawing him back in his uh, bank account. Polo G's been going uh, crazy in the jewelry game. You know, now I've been seeing this trend where whatever he's creating, everyone's now following. In the beginning, I remember when Meek Mill was like that trendsetter. First he did the picture pendants and everyone wanted the picture pendant. Then he did the DC plates and then everyone wanted the plate with their own logo. Now I feel like Polo G took that throne where he's creating the pieces and everyone's now following his footsteps. What you got over here, you got Polo G wearing this uh, insane custom piece that I only think is gonna last probably a year or two for him because iPhone changes their uh, design every single year. And what you got over here, you got this uh, big vicious dog holding his iPhone. It's custom done, of course. Every single bee has to be done separately. You have to create different waxes for every single bee, cast them, clean them up, set the diamonds in there, and then you have to enamel that outer rim, which he did the, the red color to represent the Boston Red Sox color. And then you have to attach every single link together. So a piece like this takes a lot of time, a lot of creativity, and uh, you cannot make any mistakes when you create a piece like this. Everything has to be done to the exact T to make sure there's no issues while he wears this piece. Back in the day, it was either you had a Cuban link, a tennis chain, or something like that. And now, you're able to get very creative. If you have your own logo, you can create your own logo chain. As you can see over here, Polo G wearing the B chain. There's so many different links that have been created. Even for example, this was a chain that I made over here that I did with the uh, special fox. And on this link, we did the foxtail link with some fox paws. So you're able to think of any design, and if your jeweler is skilled enough and has the correct people on his team, he's able to make any of your dreams come true. We got here a little baby, a huge innovator and a huge uh, huge influencer in this jewelry game. Got unimaginable amount of pieces and unimaginable amount of chains. And as you can see over here, he's wearing his uh, special wham piece, a different type of nameplate where he said, you know, I, I did so many 4PF pieces that were straight. He said, let's change it up. I want to do a wham piece. Let's have the letterings done different. And I really wanted to stand out. So maybe he's creating a new trend right now for the nameplates. Maybe people are going to be following this now. Of course, he's got a bunch of different tennis chains with huge rocks in there. He's got an infinity link on his neck with also 
one row, solitaire, big diamonds. A solitaire means single stone. You know, instead of doing a cluster and having a bunch of smaller stones, in the infinity link, you see it's just one row of big diamonds. We would call that solitaire. When he says, make my jewelry, he says, I got no budget, just go crazy for me. I need to stand out, I'm a little baby. I'm the man in this jewelry game, so let it be known. Let me show the people how, how big I am in this. <laughs> Got Cardi B over here rocking this insane Playboy piece. Letting everyone know that she's the, uh, the real player over here. She's the big dog. And just imagine, even those four small bunnies you got over there could be someone's regular pendants. But she said, uh, I want to make the big Playboy piece and then make four smaller ones hanging off my chain because I'm Cardi B and I need to, uh, to show out. My chain is not like anyone else's. So she really went crazy with the flair. I see a big, nice ruby as the eye to give it that contrast and really bring the piece to life in its fullest form. 400,000 on this piece. If that is a natural ruby, even a one, two character in that quality can run a lot of money. I've seen some rubies go for 10, 20,000 per carat. So you do the math on that one. ESTG went on stage. He said, let me go crazy. I'm throwing everything. And it really is giving that crazy effect. And you got Glorilla in the back shining with her. Also pearly white teeth sticking out matching the diamonds. You know, that chain, I'm looking at it, it's like uh, he's paying homage to uh, Nas's QB piece. Nas had his uh, famous Queensbridge piece that he did, and that was the same exact structured bill that Nas did back in the uh, 90s. So he said, you know, let me, uh, let me go for that same style. Let me pay homage to the, to the old school, but let me do it in a new school style. So as you can see, he did all this micro pave setting, which is, I'm assuming he's got 70, 80 carats and diamonds just in that piece alone. Big showstopper. They have a bunch of different uh, levels in that piece. As you can see, the letters are sticking out, and then he has also that bezel around, which just has that big, like, pillowy effect, giving it all its contrast for the diamonds to hit its best way. We've seen the game change tremendously just in the last decade. If you saw the earlier pieces done with uh, Jacob the Jeweler for Pharrell and stuff, you don't see as much as I mentioned. Even though those pieces are so legendary, you see the difference just in the last 10 years in this game. So somebody wants to design their first piece. First of all, make sure you have the correct budget for the piece you want to bring to life. You know, I always have people that they come, they got a 5K budget, but they want a 50K piece, you know? I always say it's also a marathon. Don't rush yourself into your first piece. If you want, save up, find the jeweler that you like, his work, and go make sure that he brings uh, what you want to life. Yo, thank you guys for watching. I'm Moses the Jeweler. Love with GQ. Peace. <laughs>